Welcome to the Radiology Vault, an open repository for radiology educational content designed for learners and medical professionals. Presented by the Michigan Medicine Department of Radiology. Hi, my name is Bill Shirk. I'll be talking about IVIS quick tips and relevant anatomy to IVIS guided IVC filter placement. Today, we're focusing on IVC anatomy and avoiding common stumbling blocks when identifying cable segments, the renal vein confluence, and iliac vein confluence. We'll use placement of a bedside IVC filter as a clinical scenario to put real life application to the IVIS anatomy. Don't get lost in the cave on IVIS. We may think that cable anatomy can be straightforward. But what happens when you can't find your renal ven veins to orient you, or you don't have pre-procedural cross-sectional imaging to make sense of the anatomy? Your navigation on an IVIS might be off. You've already assembled your team to perform a bedside IVC filter placement on a potentially critically ill patient in the ICU who can't be transported easily. And you'll want to avoid suboptimal position of the IVC filter when you place it, like in this image. And with your knowledge of cable anatomy, you can also help with special scenarios like placing a super renal IVC filter in a pregnant patient using only IVIS. So here's some quick tips for orienting to cable anatomy on IVIS. And these steps assume that you're working from a lower access, like a common femoral vein or a saphenous vein access. So you may have to adjust your approach if you're coming from above. First, make sure to identify the heart. Why? Well, number one, you want to make sure you're in the cava. If your IVUS takes a rogue course into an ascending lumbar vein, for example, you're unlikely to make it up to the heart with your IVUS and guide wire. Two, a standard methodical pullback can help you find your bearings in the remaining steps, in steps two through four. Next step that I would recommend is looking for the liver. So identifying the liver parenchyma surrounding the cava can help you see the transition from the right atrium to the intrahepatic cava, and the liver parenchyma is typically easy to identify. Next, as you pull back, look for the right renal artery. Why not the renal vein? I personally have found that the renal veins may not be straightforward to identify in all patients, especially in those that may be dehydrated, or they're critically in the, ill in the ICU with shock, or they're confused with the iliac veins more caudally. So look for the right renal artery as your landmark and as an anechoic band posterior to the cava. This is typically right around the level of the renal vein confluence. Finally, identify the iliac arteries. And notice how we're in each of these steps two through four, we're talking about extravascular structures. I, I find this helps with orientation better than intrinsic cable architecture or identifying the inflow veins. Your vein on IVIS may just look like a long tapered tube from a heart to access site. So there's nothing intrinsically about the vein that you can identify. And sometimes, again, it may be difficult to identify those inflow veins to orient you on IVIS. So starting from the top, on our case example, let's review. The right atrium is a large anechoic pulsating structure. And as you transition to the intrahepatic cava, you'll notice that the liver echotexture surrounding the cava starts to change. The liver parenchyma and that liver echotexture will provide an acoustic interface that makes the IVC wall appear as a thinner echogenic band, as seen here on this right-hand image. Here, you can see a still image from the low hepatic cava with the main portal vein at the 10 o'clock position. And main portal veins, similar to other extra cava landmarks, can help identify where you are in space. As we move caudally, we see the renal vein confluence here, and importantly, the right renal artery posterior to the cava. So in some patients, we may not be able to see this renal vein confluence as well as we do here. And remember, the right renal artery may be seen even in those patients where the renal vein confluence is obscured or flattened or otherwise difficult to see. When considering placement in IVC filter, I'll use this marker, the right renal artery, to measure where I want to position the apex of the filter. So this is a very important landmark. Don't forget to check for interluminal filling defects. This may alter your plan for filter placement. In this patient, we see a collapsed fibrin sheath from a previous ECMO cannula, and this is shown here as an echogenic filling defect. Finally, orient to your iliac veins. And this is often, I find, a stumbling block. The operator, operator may mistake the iliac vein confluence for the renal vein confluence, and therefore position the filter too low, thinking that the iliac vein confluence is actually the renal vein confluence. So look at the adjacent bifurcating iliac arteries. On the images to the left, we can see the right common iliac artery as at the far edge of the IVUS at the 12 o'clock position, coursing toward the three o'clock position. 
And as we stop our image, we can see the common iliac bifurcating into external and internal iliac arteries. And the external iliac artery, as we course down toward the axis, will then continue alongside the iliac vein. Here is another example of a different patient where we've accessed the left iliofemoral segment and we can see the left common iliac vein. Notice that the vertebral body is posterior at the six to nine o'clock position and the right common iliac artery is anteriorly positioned at 12 o'clock. So remembering your positional relationships between arteries and veins can really help you navigate this fluoroless procedure and if you're just using IBIS. So in summary, orientation is critical for successful IVUS guided IVC filter placement. And as a trainee, I recommend that you take your time whenever you use IVUS and the IVC or the iliac veins to become familiar with these relationships. And this will help similar IVUS forward procedures become less intimidating over time. Thank you.